Hi, you've clicked on to today's Tropical Tidbit for Wednesday. Over here in the Atlantic, the big story today remains Hurricane Irene entering the southeast Bahamas today, passed through the Turks and the Caicos Islands last night, is now a Category 3 hurricane, a major hurricane, and we talked about this possibility, how this would be a major hurricane off the southeast U.S. coast. We are now dealing with it over here, and the Bahamas are getting whacked by the system right now. Definitely improving in organization. We can see that the eye has popped out clearly on high resolution visible imagery here. The outflow has started to expand a little bit to the northwest and we have a more symmetric core about the center. This is going to remain slightly lopsided to the northeast quadrant but remember I said although it wouldn't become perfectly symmetric it would become more round here as it started strengthening and we are now seeing this becoming a major storm, a beautiful but very dangerous storm. The eye is trying to clear out now and we are seeing this move directly over the Bahamas Islands here waiting to see see what kind of reports we get out of there. I have no idea how many people actually live on these islands. I know that 70% of the Bahamas population is over here in Nassau, their capital city, so I hope that no, not very many people live down here, but they are getting whacked right now with a direct hit from the storm. Moving overall west-northwest, you can see there's some wobbles in the eye here. They're called trochoidal oscillations that can happen in varying degrees of intensity with the eyes of intense tropical cyclones. It will wobble a little bit on its way west-northwest, but the average motion is going to remain this way here, so we can't get hooked. Like right now, at this very precise moment, it's moving almost due west, but the overall motion is remaining an average of about west-northwest here, starting to curve up more towards the northwest as it starts to move up here. The forecast track currently takes this just east of Nassau, we're watching to see how close this really comes because at this distance here, Nassau could get hurricane force winds from this storm, perhaps a couple categories of hurricane force winds depending on how close the eye is. So we're watching carefully for the fine details of how pla of how close this passes and this will be the major concern for the Bahamas over the next day or so as this storm approaches. There's some good news to be had though a little bit in terms of the environmental conditions that will prevent uh, Irene from strengthening too much, put a ceiling on her maximum intensity. You can see all these cloud bands on the western side here, intense cloud bands rotating around. These are areas of converging low-level wind, and they represent where rain bands should be but they're not because there's dry air off to the northwest of the system. So where the rain bands would normally be, there are just areas of converging low-level cloud as they come into the area of low pressure. So there is dry air off to the northwest here that will limit the storm's final intensity and the recon is still reporting an open eye wall here, still trying to stay closed for a significant amount of time, but the eye is clearing out and we now have a Category 3 hurricane. This is the water vapor imagery showing the pattern that we're dealing with. Trough number one lifted out. Now I'm going to point out the forecast error that we have had during the last few days, what the models didn't see and what we didn't see. This back here, this trough was not here on the models a few days ago. This trough was not there. We had this one lifting out, then we had a residual weakness over the eastern seaboard with ridging over the top. We did not have this trough, but now we have a second trough that is diving down here and is going to beat up this Bermuda Ridge. And this ridge is going to continually be beaten down by a series of shortwave troughs coming across southern Canada and the northern U.S. over the next few days. And this is what could attempt to bring Irene farther east and try to save the United States here. First Cape Hatteras, and then we're going to have to talk about New England. Cape Hatteras first here. The models have now reached a very tight consensus moving up, and you can see that Nassau is somewhere, somewhere in here. The track is very close by with Nassau to the west, getting by on the weaker side of the storm, but could still have a lot of issues over there in the Bahamas, and so folks need to watch very carefully in this area. Hopefully people are prepared, either gone entirely or in a safe place for this storm here. You can see that the tight consensus bring this up, brings this up and curves it north-northeast, very close to the Outer Banks here. It should be it should be emphasized that the Outer Banks are not out of this right now. And if you live in the Outer Banks, you need to either be gone or be finishing 
or be gone by the time the storm is there you know finish up your preparations make sure you know watch for another day or so and see if the storm is coming directly over you or perhaps a little farther east in which case you could probably stay but if it's coming right over your house in here I wouldn't really want to be there if this is going to be a category three that's up to you folks but be prepared in here have a plan ready have a plan ready for evacuation and preparation of your property should be finished by now or very soon as the storm is coming very close in here and then it's going to move off towards the north northeast and there's a lot of spread over up in here near New England and we have anywhere we have a few solutions that keep this offshore altogether which is something we're again hoping for the trend has been east so we may see this continue east and perhaps spare the United States altogether at the expense of the Canadian Maritimes up here as a tropical storm however we have a lot of models over New England back here. And we have a couple even up over Jersey and central New England. Those are the higher resolution GFDL and HWRF, which have been consistently too far west so far. So we are hoping that that is still the case and these are outliers over here. But the consensus is over New England, eastern Long Island over here and over Massachusetts over the Boston area. This would be a very bad situation if the storm actually comes through here. And we still have several days, three to four days, before we have to see it in this area so there's room for shifting around there's room for things to work out with the shortwave trough that it's going to be phasing with and this is the problem that we've had with the models so far is that this trough this is not the one that will be here in four days there's another one behind it up here this series will be swinging out this one will be leaving another one will be coming down out of western Canada and how the models handle these short waves is what we're dealing with there's a lot of disagreement within the models about the height fields over northeastern North America during the time that Irene is trying to recurve and that's why we see a spread over near New England. So there's a lot of possibilities still with how exactly the storm will track up the coast, but it should be emphasized that North Carolina isn't safe yet. If you live in coastal North Carolina, you should still be preparing for a major storm to be near your area, especially the Outer Banks and Cape Hatteras here, and then New England should probably also begin some kind of preparations or at least keep watching the storm for another couple of days to see if every if the track is still over you and at least be ready folks up here don't generally have that much of a plan for hurricanes but folks should at least be aware that this is here and see that things need to be done in order to keep folks safe in this area in case the storm actually does take this track it would be very bad if it does millions upon millions of people live here it's the most densely populated area of the entire country so this is a very bad thing now here's the reason that the forecast has had to shift east is that the models have not seen this strong gyre of low pressure up here west of Greenland. Greenland's right here and the models a few days ago did not have this here and I did not see that this is going to be here and uh, this this low that's been up here, this is 60 hours GFS ensembles by the way, illustrating that this gyre is up here sending short waves one after another down across southern Canada and into the northeast United States which is beating down the Bermuda High and allowing Irene to come more north-northeast than she was originally forecast to. Now remember just a few days ago way back when Irene was back over here in the northern Antilles we had her in South Carolina as where we were talking about her being after she initially formed she took her low pressure center up to the north farther north than was expected at the time but as soon as she reformed we talked about the track going into South Carolina and the Carolinas being in the bullseye of this. When you think about it, that kind of a track five to six to seven days out has only shifted this far. It's not that bad here. However, the forecast error that was made is that we did not see this gyre of low pressure up over northeastern Canada sending short waves one after another into this ridge, breaking it down in here and allowing the possibility for Irene to escape Cape Hatteras possibly even Cape Cod as well. But again, New England is still right in the threat area for this, and the Hurricane Center track this morning brings it up straight into eastern Long Island and Cape Cod, Massachusetts out here. And you can see that they now agree with my forecast and peak intensity, which is still for a low-end Category 4 to occur in the northwestern Bahamas, and then gradual weakening thereafter. Normally I would expect more weakening in this area from a storm like this, 
but the global models have been extremely bullish in this area, northeast of North Carolina, and they have been extremely bullish on the deepening of the storm, which means that we are expecting a stronger than normal storm in here, as the Hurricane Center indicates, a Category 2 east of Delaware Bay. That is not a great thing that you want to see. This would be a very bad disaster in this area if this track came true. Again, we could see it shift farther east. We could see it stay the same or shift even a little bit farther west. We still have, this is 8 a.m. Sunday. Today is Wednesday. That's four days. So folks need to be aware that things could still change and that folks are not safe along the eastern seaboard here. There's still a great threat from North Carolina all the way into New England here and all the way up here. You can see they still have a hurricane in central Maine. So this would be a very, very bad storm for the east coast. Something we haven't seen since the east coast runners of you know, Bob 91, Gloria 85, Floyd 99, things like these storms are memorable, and this could be one of them if it actually takes this track. So folks need to be really aware here and be preparing, have a plan for evacuation if you're in the Outer Banks of North Carolina, and be thinking about what you would do to keep your property safe if you live in New England, and pay attention to the Hurricane Center advisories on this storm. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.